So, what do you want to talk about today, Sarah? When I was seven years old, I'd ride my bike down to this dinky little five-and-dime drugstore called Ben Franklin's. I'd go down there with my best friend, Janie Tepper. <clears throat> she lived across the street. Janie's dad worked for IBM. He was an engineer or something, so she always had more money than I did. She had the longest, blackest, thick hair you'd ever seen. Janie's mom loved to do all kinds of funky stuff to her hair. She'd always give us a dollar and send us down to Ben Franklin's to buy different hair clips, barrettes, colored rubber bands, whatever we could get for the dollar. My dad lost his job at the mattress factory where he worked. The family who owned it went fully automated, cut back on the stuffers and loaders. My dad was a stuffer. He didn't do too well without a job. My mom didn't do too well having him around all the time. Things got a little rough. I started spending more time at Janie's after school and then one morning I woke up and my dad was gone. Some men aren't meant for hard times. My mom got a job waiting tables. I stopped going to the store with Janie. Instead, I'd ride over to the factory. I'd spend hours in there, watching the gears and the belts and the greasy black machines. And even as a kid, I knew something wrong was happening in there, something inhuman. One day after I'd spent hours in there watching it, I guess I must have got lost in there. It was late when I hurried home. I snuck in through the back door, found my mother sitting on my father's chair in the dark, crying. And after everything my mom had been through, I'd never seen her cry. This was the first time, and that is terrifying for a child. Before I could ask what was wrong, she, she said Janie and pointed out the front window. There was a police car and an ambulance. And Janie's little bike lying in the middle of the street. And this pool of dark, darkness just spreading out. And the metal of her bike all twisted up like its back was broken. And it hit me in my seven-year-old brain that somehow this was my fault. Somehow I should never have stopped riding with her. Somehow I should have kept my dad from leaving. And it haunted me as I grew up. Even as I comb my hair, I'd think of her and wonder if I'd failed her. But now, now I cannot help but sit in this white, tiny room you have me locked in and wonder if God or the devil or even death itself was sending me a message from the future all the way back through time to that happy little girl sitting on her bike. Machines, Sarah. Machines. You can ride, and you can run, and you can hide, but they are coming. You can pretend they're not, but they are coming, and they are faster and stronger. And they have been built to do one perfect thing. To kill you. They will kill you. And your friends and your family and your mother, and your father, and Janie Tepper, and Kyle Reese, and your son. Your son! They will kill everyone you love, and everyone you hold close, and there is nothing you can do about it. Because they are coming. They are coming. And they will find you. 
Because that's what they do! That's all they do! Look, I do! Freedom! 